Clark, will you tell us about your typical Friday morning? What did you do this morning? Typical Friday morning. Um, are we live? We're going? Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Oh. So, um, it's so funny because Friday mornings, they, they vary for me. You know, a lot of folks, you know, ask me. I get asked that a lot, you know, and it's so day to day. You know, for yeah. every Sunday night, I literally sit on my computer. Um, I'm a late night guy. I don't get up early. Really, I get up like 8, 7.30 is really early. 8 is pretty normal. But yeah. I don't get to bed until like 1.30 or 2. Mm-hmm. So, like, so, like, you know, Liza's a warrior, and she stays up with me late. Um, she's usually in bed around midnight to 1. So typically between like midnight and one thirty is like when I get to like sit down, no kids, no wife, no nothing, and like do my thing. So Sunday nights I plan my week. Cool. And I usually just I have like one of those composition books and it's like a running to do list. And I don't like tear out any sheets. I just check them off. So like it's just okay. constantly ongoing. And if I miss something, like it's not a check. So like I revisit like kind of the importance of it and like how that looks. So yeah. you know. I don't usually plan a week out. You know, Fridays don't really look like anything certain for me. I know that's like kind of the start for the weekend. Um, you know, oftentimes, sometimes Fridays, I just do kind of what I want to do because I know yeah. that we have our full time team on at the restaurants and like I'm not as needed. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, we're running such a tight crew right now with like COVID and all that. Um, right. I'm always like one call out away from having to come sure. in. So sure. I don't like go far or whatever, but it, it really depends on what's on the schedule list. You know, if I have to mm-hmm. meet, people in the town if I have to meet other you know, professionals or if I have to like pick the kids up from school like it just exactly Mary Tudum I think does something similar you plan your weeks on Sunday right I do yeah I really I do try to except for that you and I have complete opposite sleep schedules Clark yeah. Very yeah. Much I go so. to sleep really early and get up really early so yes. yeah. yeah we're only awake for several hours together yes. <laughs> <laughs> well Mary Tudum um it looks like folks have begun to hop on so would you like to introduce our special guest today of course I would of course I would so Guys, today we have Clark Merrill with us. So I'm sure that if you've ever been down here, you've eaten at one of Clark's restaurants. So Dank Burrito, Beaufort Olive Oil, uh, Circa 81. He's got Merrill Estates and Gardens, which is over um, on the island, an incredible event space where they do beautiful, just beautiful things. Um, And then Clark, we're really excited because he has an upcoming restaurant that's going to be in Moorhead. Um, It's going to be called Social Q. And so it's really kind of, uh, if you've been to the Big Oak over on the island also, you know, you pull up, you hop out and you order, you can eat in your car, you can take it home, but just really, really delicious Mm. food. A lot of smoked meats. Um, Clark, what do you want to tell us about that? We're fired up. It should be later this month, right? That you're all hoping to roll that out? Yeah, we're looking like, yeah, end of the month. That's really kind of the timeline. I don't have a hard timeline, but that's, I think that's where we're at. Uh, Yeah, so it's going to be, this is kind of more of like a passion project for me. Like I enjoy doing this. Um, of course we need to run a successful and profitable business, but this isn't something that like I'm doing for money. It's like something that I just want to do. And it's actually something I've been gearing up for, for a long time. I was actually in motion of doing something like this when we opened the Dank Burrito in Raleigh. Really? Yeah. We were kind of on this trajectory to like do this project and then that opportunity came up. And I just thought at the time that kind of made more sense. So we just tabled the idea and, you know, I had already invested about $75,000 in barbecue equipment at that point, you know, I just kind of put it to the side. Wow. Um, I mean, anybody that's been to Dink Burrito have seen all the smokers and stuff sitting out back. Yeah. You know? uh-huh. I mean, we had, um, we're cooking on Lang offset smokers. So Ben Lang is down in South Georgia cool. and he makes a particular type of cooker that I really enjoy and uh we now we have four of them <laughs> so awesome. you know that's that's it so i mean it, it's really going to be something special a little bit different i, I think then i've heard i've only eaten at jj's once and how about but it, I, I think if there was a similar style it, it could be them i don't really know much about those guys but it's, yeah. it's going to be a lot different than than any anything you know i'm not really i'm not really labeling myself you know Texas or North Carolina like what kind of barbecue you know, like oh, we're just gonna be yeah. doing like fun fusion you know it's kind of how we cook in general like yeah, we'll right. take different flavors from around the globe and apply it in different ways and it's it's good you know the pork belly burn-ins that we do oh. um you know we we have like an Asian base like that mm-hmm. we make for the sauce and it's I mean what is that you know so yeah. <laughs> it's delicious is what it is it's yeah, so good it, oh my god it's all gonna be pretty good you know and you know, 
some locals had the opportunity to like taste a little bit of what we're doing back when COVID first popped off back right. in like March, April, May. We did six pop-ups with our food truck. So we have a trailer already dedicated to, to a barbecue as well. So we'll That's be able so to cute trailer. That's right. We'll be able to pop off with the caterings and all that kind of like right yeah. out the gate. So at the old Kmart parking lot, we did six services and they went really well. It was kind of like proof of concept slash hobby yeah. slash we needed to do something. We wanted to do something different. We had all this equipment sitting there. So we were just like, what the heck? And um, those six pop-ups were wildly successful. Like we really um, did well with it. Well, Clark, something I, I love, and Mary Tino, I bet you were just about to say the same thing, but something that we have followed you guys throughout the past couple of years, you guys always kind of step up whenever crap hits the fan. Yeah. When you, you brought yeah. up social cue with COVID and then you guys were huge with Hurricane Florence and Hurricane Dorian. I mean, yeah. you guys always step up to the plate. So it's, re it's really neat to see that something that you kind of tested during a pandemic is actually becoming a, a restaurant. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's 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 just kind of part of who we are just as yeah. a as, as as me as a person and us as a business and i feel like all of our our leaders that manage and even just like all the folks that work with us i think you know you have to have a heart for serving to like work with us really because i mean you know we everything isn't always like conventional and like just as you would think you know i i remember you know early on when we had the dank burrito just the truck i remember robert who runs all the dank burrito stuff um was coming back from an event downtown Moorhead and he literally had somebody flag him down when he was on his way back and he like pulled over and like fed this dude like you know a parking oh. lot because the guy wanted a taco like how easy would it have been to like ignore the guy or just keep on rolling or like yeah. no like he pulls over like he's cleaned up like he broke all the stuff back out um, oh. and fed this guy I mean that's just oh. like you know the heart that we kind of carry through and through so yeah, that's awesome. That's a great story. I love that. And, and it's, it was, it's really cool. I mean, but it, I mean, that's just like one story among many that, yeah. you know, it's just how we are. And, you know, I had actually a couple of days ago on Facebook, a pop up reminder from Florence. Same story. Literally the dang burrito in Moorhead. We were like, we like hit the light switch. We we're key in the door, turning, locking up and a like 12 man, um, electric lineman crew pulled in and like you guys have anything to eat and mm -hmm. we just got finished like we were actually smoking meat at that point because it the barbecue goes a long way and we had just pulled everything out and we're, we're cooling everything and uh, uh yeah so we, we like brought these linemen back in fired everything back up and like awesome. fed these dudes like if you go into dank now above the trash can on the east wall there's a big lineman sticker i don't even know what it means but they were like really <laughs> the post they, all, they all signed one of their orange vests and like so that story and like, but just like that, that, that mindset and attitude just really kind of like, that's, that oh. represents us well. I love that. I think that's awesome. And I think that's definitely who you guys are in the community. And I think yeah. also, just like you were referencing earlier, you guys also in the community are kind of masters of comfort food, but with a twist and with a flavor profile that's maybe not expected. I um, mean, you know, we've been lucky enough to have Clark come and cook. He also um, is a private chef. Hey, um, hey. If you're lucky enough to get to have him or convince him to do it, but um, we've had him, our team oh, had him actually at my house. We've had him um, for our last year. We we rented a beach house and spent the weekend together and had just had so much fun. And we had Clark come in and cook and just does an incredible job and so much fun to kind of check out what those different flavor profiles are. Yeah, yeah. everything. Was no, cool. those were really fun to do. Those dinners, oh, you know, and it was equally <laughs> as fun for me because you guys were celebrating like really big milestones. Yeah. You yeah. know, I felt like, you know, this is cool. Like, I get to, like, play a little bit in, like, yeah. their achievements. Like, I and really, you're, still, you're still friends with us after. Yeah, so yeah. that's a win. You guys are great. You guys are great. Um, but I really, like, I really, I'm like, this is awesome. Like, you know, it's just to yeah. be able to come hang out. I mean, you know, we're, we're all, you're busy, we're busy. So, like, to. to, to that's right. Well, you were a saint to put up with that big group of women. There's no doubt about yeah, that. Yeah. And now here we are, we're heading into the holiday weekend. And so we thought who better to come to for some bougie boat snacks um, to give us kind of some, some, some highbrow, although I love, I'm excited. It doesn't necessarily have to be highbrow. I know for my other friends who are, who are chefs and folks who own restaurants, that what I often hear them say is that when it comes time to really have your family time and enjoy you know, kind of enjoy yourself and feed yourself and feed your family. It's not necessarily about the fanciest, right? Lots of times it's about really good ingredients and putting together things that make you happy without having to spend a whole day in the kitchen to prep them. Is that kind of your approach to the boat snack 
Yeah, I love it. You know, I, I got something that I just put together on the bar over here, and it's something that we that we do at the restaurant, and I really enjoy it. And I was really when when we were had the conversation about, you know, this, you know, I was really racking my brain on like what to do, and I kept kind of like landing on the same thing. And it's really funny because right now on social media, there's a meme going around that has like a charcuterie board, and basically it's like the equivalent of like a grown up lunchable. Have you guys? <laughs> I'm like, that's so true. Like when I was a kid, like you know, turkey, ham, cheese, cracker, and like an Oreo, you know. Yeah. So it's like, you no. Know, so like that's kind of where we landed. Um, I love that a grown up lunch. Like yeah. where we're at here. Let's check it out. You know, if you guys have been to Circa, oh. you've seen. Let me see if I can get. You don't really want to see me, but here you go. Wait, of course we do. There you go. You get to see like the chef's tour. So like, you know, for boat snacks, like, you know, when we go out to shack and like hang out, I mean, that's really what it is. You know, it's the meat and the cheeses and like the, the chutneys and the pickled items. Um, if you guys have ever had a chance to get into the olive oil stores, the boat for olive oil company, we have uh, a lot of these things that are labeled under the 81. Let's see. Can we get a shot of this? The 81 umbrella of like different things. So yeah. we're using, um, like North Carolina cheeses, like uh, Ash County cheese from West Jefferson, oh. which they're, they're super delicious. You know, we use those in the restaurant a lot. Um, but, you know, when you're putting together a board like this, you can go to the Olive Oil Company and, and pick up some of these snacks. Harris Cedar has a great selection. And I think, you know, when you're putting this together, it's like, what do I get? So I, I think, you know, I would encourage you to, to think about like textures and like flavors and really what your, um, what, what you like to eat. So like, um, no cheese is wrong. If you like blue cheese, get a, get a really good blue. Um, you know, you, you have some salty meat. You know, one thing I think that a lot of like just home cooks forget about is really like textures in food. Mm -hmm. Like, is it crunchy? Is it like soft? Like, how does that feel when you're eating it? I mean, imagine like, you know, a cracker with a piece of ham. So like you got crunchy and like salty and a little chewy. So it's just kind of putting that together. You know, sweet, salty are good. So if you get something that's like, you know, chutney like or like a uh, a preserve um you know yeah. i love truffle honey drizzled on things you get like savory and sweet on stuff um so i know this isn't like incredibly like exciting or like different but it's something that like i really enjoy out on the boat you know like ham olives edamame what well, i think it's exciting i, I really do well let me ask you some questions so let's say that i'm going to the grocery store and i'm going to get these things clark i, I feel overwhelmed by number one, what kind of olive do I really want to get, right? Because there's all these different kinds, and I, I don't know, I just feel overwhelmed by olives. I'll tell you then, one of my favorite are these like green, they're like the Casa Petrano olives. Do you guys see those? Mm -hmm. They're uh, they're say really the name delicious. again. Say it again, say the name. The Casa Petrano olives, C A S T. I don't know how to spell it, but I know how to spell it. <laughs> we'll look it up. Yeah, but they're um, these got pits in them. We have them at the restaurant, they're really delicious. Yeah. They're not um. They have a little bit of a different flavor than just like your standard, like kind of clean olive. Um, I really like those, and they're not super oily. They're not oily at all. Which like is if nice you look for the, the skin on them. Like that, that's wet. That's not oil. like they're dry. Yeah. So they're really. The Castle Vetrano is yeah. something to look for. Yeah. Okay. Really and then, for, what about for the meats? Like I feel like a lot of times I go in there and you've got all the different types, like soprasada and salami and all these different types of meats. What are the ones that kind of have a universal appeal? I like so. What's not featured on this board right now that we do put in the restaurant, we do like a dry cured chorizo that I like. So, you know, some meats are spicier, some meats are more um, like hammy and chewy. Some of them like have a higher like salt yield. Like um, I suggest just getting a few like smaller packs and just really kind of trying what you like. Um, you'll see at the grocery stores, they're doing like uh, prepackaged like pepperoni. Like the other day I got home and I opened the refrigerator and Eliza ordered Harris Teeter, hasn't picked it up yet. Like the kids had like, String cheese and there was pepperoni. So I was like wrapping pepperoni around string cheese and just like eating it like that. Okay. Like, Yum. Yeah. I mean, you could eat that on the boat. I mean, it just, there's no rules. You know, just whatever's quick and packaged. You know, I was really like thinking like, what will people actually bring on our boat to eat? Yeah. But, um, so one other thing that I have here that I really love, and we carry this at the olive oil store. It is this Mr. Mrs. Miller's. It's like hot okay. pepper mustard. Okay. And I love this stuff. There is a little bit of backstory. I was visiting my in-laws in Florida. Five o'clock came, she bust out like some snacky things and this hot pepper mustard. And I had never heard of it before. And I was 
really confused. I was like thinking like French is yellow mustard. I'm like, why are we going to be yeah. eating mustard with cream cheese? Like it doesn't make sense. And she had a eight ounce block of Philadelphia cream cheese and like just poured this on top of it and had crackers and a knife, like three things, crackers, cream cheese, mustard. And I, I literally ate that entire batch. She had to like refill the plate. <laughs> um, Yum. And like from that point on, it's like when we started ordering this for the olive oil stores. So I am a big fan and, you know, dips, sandwiches, handheld stuff like that is really good for a boat. So it's just uh, a block of cream cheese. You pour yeah. mustard over it and then you dip a cracker and you get both the cream cheese and the mustard. That's what you're saying? Uh, yeah. And it's like, so, I mean, you know, we've got people that come to the store that have it. You know, they know exactly what I'm talking about. But it is like, it is addicting. Like you cannot, you, got, you know, you need to make sure like the cream cheese is spreadable. Yeah. Soft. And you know, when you're on the boat, you're out in the heat and the sun, like let it get warm. You know, let it, let it, mm -hmm. let it soften. There you go. But, yeah. I mean, I would, I would, let me, I could sleep a little bit out, but it's, it's, you know, it's, it's nothing crazy, but it, it's literally like the cream cheese. I mean, that's, that's it. Will it's you so, tilt it down? I want to see you. We want to see your hands work too. Oh, uh, I just have, it's just kind of a. I a see. Bowl. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, you yeah. just like bring like a Tupperware. Put, put the cream cheese in a Tupperware, like let it get warm on the boat, like soften. And then, you know, carry your pepper mustard, and, you know, and it doesn't have um, to be refrigerated until after it's open. Right. Um, oh my gosh, yum. No, uh, it's, it's, it's really awesome. Hold on one second. Okay. Okay, <laughs> and so we can go to the Beverly Olive Oil Company to get the sweet, it was sweet hot mustard, Mrs. Miller's sweet hot mustard. Yeah, it is so good. And then like, you can put it on like turkey sandwiches and like use it in like so many like other, yeah. other ways. But, um, yeah, it's so good. Like, you just got to try it. I can't even explain. You just got to go. That's so good. And that's that also that sounds delicious. That's also something that, of course, you would bring on the boat separately. But, like, if you make a charcuterie, did I say that right? Char yeah, charcuterie, yeah. Um, board at home, you can, like, maybe stick that in the middle of the board and, yeah. and have that as part of it. That's so smart. When, when you guys try this, and I got some jars. I can give you some. I just, I really, and I'm not even, like, trying to sell this product because I don't even care. <laughs> Buy it or not. But it is so good. Like, people are looking for, like, quick and easy you, you see a lot of pepper jelly on cream cheese makes sense again i was just so mind blown when you hear the word mustard you just don't think like we're gonna eat this you yeah, know what right. i mean like it's a condiment on something right so that sounds delicious i love that everybody on my list might be getting some some hot <laughs> some hot mustard and some cream cheese for christmas I love, it. So good. I love stuff like that i really do that's like the pepper jelly i'm kind of sick of the pepper jelly and and that can be not that good if you don't get the right kind of pepper jelly i that's will say true. You, that's true yeah yeah but, but that sounds you know, delicious well, I'm excited about this. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to ask you. I think the only other thing that I have a question about, about putting together the perfect board or taking these ingredients out on the boat is what kind of nuts? Do you do the Marcona almonds? We do Marcona almonds. Um, I, pine nuts are kind of pricey. Um, I like corn nuts. Corn nuts? Ooh, they're so salty, which I love. I love they're some salty. Salt. They're crunchy. They got that corn flavor. I love corn nuts. But the Marcona almonds are good. They can be okay. like a little oily, but they're, no, they're really good. We use those a lot. Um, okay. Just so, I don't have any nuts, but I, I I like corn nuts, and we have there's a variety that we can get from our um, food purveyor, and they're they're really good. Every time I go to the food shows, I like steal a bag and I eat them around the show. <laughs> while I'm so Clark, as we as we wrap up, will you really quick recap? You can say it, and we can comment it below. Um, will you say exactly what you have on that board next to you? I just want yeah, to make sure so, as an example. Yeah, so we have like some Ash County cheeses, like variety. Uh, okay. We have like some blue and some other things um we use a benton ham here i'm really a big fan of benton hams they're coming from madisonville tennessee which is right across the carolina border um, he is a true like pioneer in what he does his stuff is is awesome and we use his bacon a lot really heavily smoked look it up his name's alan benton um benton. so benton ham okay benton ham yeah okay. and you can order super delicious um we have some chutney on here like some pineapple chutney we can do pineapple mango so at the restaurant you know we always got fruit running through here and uh we have pieces or ends. We use it. Like we have pickled watermelon rind. We use watermelon oh. on our brunch, right? So then we use like watermelon rind or the leftover and, and Yum. pickle it. Uh, you know, I have like a simple boiled egg up here on the board. I do boiled egg oh. with like some smoked alderwood salt. So it like kind of changes it a little bit. Like a smoky, salty egg. Like, well, like that's like a good oh. condiment. Okay. Um, where, where would one get smoked alderwood salt? Uh, both for our company. <laughs> okay, great. Good. I love that. Okay, that's yeah. great. I love a hard boiled egg. So I yeah. love that. Yeah. And then, you know, we just have some um, like pickled cucumbers, but we, like we pickle them with like rice wine vinegar. So they're not like your dill pickle or anything. They're like sweeter. 
Right. You know, we use like uh, rice wine vinegar. We use like pickled ginger juice. So they kind of have that mm -hmm. more like Asian lean. Um, olives. So, but yeah. you can make it, like I said, whatever you want. Like if you want salty, sweet, like there's no rules. Um, I yeah. know Harris Teeter carries like a really good fig spread. I like fig. Um, goat mm -hmm. cheese is really good. I like to take goat cheese, soften it, and hit it with like some lemon zest and lemon juice. Kind of whip it up a little bit, Dude, maybe add a little heavy cream to it. That sounds like, good. It becomes real spreadable. It's got like real high citrus, but it's like got that tangy savoriness. I've really never thought about that. I, I drizzle some olive oil on my um, goat cheese. Yeah. And I love that. I think that's so delicious. So, but I've never thought about adding any lemon zest. Lemon zest actually makes anything delicious. I'm pretty so, sure. Very it's true. really vibrant and like fragrant, and I really like it. It's got a good kick. Yeah, yeah that's a really good tip. Yeah. That is. Okay. Well, well I love that. I know. Meg, I feel like I am ready for the boat. I really wish that I could get you to help me organize my charcuterie board because it would look pretty, but I guess <laughs> I can handle it. I'll send you guys a picture when I do it. There you go. Hey, Meg, will you please ask Clark our favorite question? I would love to. Clark, um, we ask this to all of our guests on Coffee okay. with MC, and we would like to ask you, what is saving your life right now? What is, that's a big question. What is saving my life right now? I think it's kind of two part. Can it, can it be two part? Of course. Sure. Yeah. I cool. think, um, you know, I think the first part really for me, you know, we're, we're just like such a crazy time right now. And like as a small business owner, um, there's like a ton of challenges out there, right. That we face. I mean, most of them are very obvious. I think we're very fortunate to be in a community such as ours. Um, it, it, and you know, you, one would think the tourism focus of our town is, you know, could be like a potential like turnoff, but you know, I, I think the, I keep saying the hot Sandy beach is the draw and, um, you know, people have really felt like a little more comfortable down here. And I think everybody has their, their view on the world right now and mask and just the whole, all of it. And, you know, everybody is, you know, has the right to believe what they want to believe, which is really cool. But I think, um, you know, being, you know, I have a restaurant in Raleigh too, and the vibe up there is just extremely different. And, um, you know, so I think, you know, for me, we're really fortunate to be in this area and to operate and live down here right now. And you guys are really seeing that too, as you know, professionals in your industry, just, yeah. just with like home sales and just kind of what things are doing. Um, so I, most people aren't opening a new restaurant right now. You know, a lot mm -hmm. of people are closing restaurants and like, here I am like with this opportunity in front of me and, you know, some call me crazy. Like, yeah, it's crazy. We're all a little crazy. We're bad shit crazy. <laughs> um, you know, I opened Circa in 2010, which was not a really good time either. Right. You know, I was like 28 and had saved a bunch of money and I really didn't even think about it not working you know it was just like this was just gonna work because we're gonna make it work and it did and, you know here we are ten and a half years later you know um you know i was 28 had some money saved in a freaking dream and here, you know what i mean it was just like one of those things and you know so social security for me is more of like a passion project like we definitely don't need any more busy we're busy as crap people you know what i mean we have so much going on and, you know to the, to the point where that kind of leads me to the second piece of the question and uh it, it's what is saving me right now i think it's um I really think it's Liza in my life. Oh, you know? She is the best. She is, she is, she's, she is so awesome. I mean, I, I can't, I don't even want to sit here and just like blab about her because it's just like, doesn't even make sense. But like, I mean, I, no, I mean, it's really, it's like, you know, she's my wife. And then like, what is a wife? A wife's a partner or a spouse is a partner. And like, she's been like a true partner. You know, she's like gotten down and dirty with me and like, just keeps going. You know, I think so many people would just like, cry uncle and scream mercy because I, I, you know, and I've done it to myself. You know I mean? We have five restaurants, two food trucks, four retail stores and a venue. That's what we do, you know? And it's like, and then like we have two little kids, you know? And it, it's one of those things where like, you know, I, I need a road warrior with me, you know? And she works for a software company full time. Like a lot of people don't know that. They think she just helps with our business. No way. She works for, a, she's been with them 15 years. She works remote. She's been remote for 13 years. She does project management and implementation for a big software company in Raleigh. They, what? they do it's regulatory education for finance and software, like insurance companies. And wow. It's Unbelievable. It's crazy. So she like, she's has like really big, like bank of America is her client. You know what wow. I mean? She deals yeah. like with high level stuff. Yeah. So she's like full time with her job. She's more than full time with us. Like wife, mom, like it's, it's crazy. And she's like a freak show. Like, <laughs> So many people look at me and like what I do and like, I'm usually like the face of everything we have going on, but she is like literally 
just the, the bond behind all of it that really just keeps it going. And I think that like, if I didn't have somebody that was like equally as, she's not crazy. She's really Southern sweet, smart. Like she's, she's, she's it. And uh, she's delightful. Yeah. So I didn't have like that. And I'm, I'm kind of crazy and like backward tat tattoos. Like I say shit a lot and cut, like, I just, you know what I mean? Like we just, you know, I'm, I'm like the, the, the chef and like the, the driver of that. And then like, she's really like on the backside, like just making sure it gets done. Like, you know, a hundred people email me and a hundred people think that it's me, but it's her responding. Like when you guys email, it's not like, I have no idea what's going on. I get briefed every day. I'm like, what I have to do. I literally have like resigned to the fact that I don't even think, and it's, it works. Like I'm not mad about it. Like I get a briefing that morning. Like you have this, you have that. And like, I just go. That's awesome. And you know, if there's a curveball, we, we, ad we adjust, but you know, um, you know, it, yeah. I, I, and I think about that. I'm like, what if I didn't have wise then? Like I had yep. like, like, how would that even like work? Like, yeah. because she just does so much. I mean, and the, the venue business is really growing and like, you know, Beautiful. the moment that I like signed up to do social cues, she wasn't like questioning me or like, why are you doing this? Like, she's just like, all right, well, here we go. Like, here's another one, you know? And it's like, that's, that's what I'm grateful for because we're in a season of life right now where it's like, we're really busy, you know? And I think at our age right now, especially in like growth mode, it's like, you know, in life you can, you, you either have time or money. And you really don't have both right now. You know, like maybe when you get older and you retire, you got money and time. But like, you know, when you're like building a business and you're growing, like it's either or. And it's there's a lot of sacrifices, like you guys all know, that like have to be made. And, uh, you know, she's she's willing and they, like she's just taking the sacrifice with me. And it's, you know, it's really cool to have, you know, we don't have like this big master vision. But, you know, there are little visions that become a big vision. And like she's like right on board with it. And you know so i guess like if i had to be like anything that is saving me or just that i love or like that you know it, it's just like her willingness to like participate and her ability to like yeah. rise you know like like we say our prayers at night like and often in the prayers are like just capacity it's like we just pray for like you know clarity and capacity like what are we supposed to be doing like how how are we going to handle this because you know in covid was one of those it's like you know so big and so out of our control it's just like you know right. wow. clark Liza needs to take that whole clip of what you just said and just set it as her ringtone. I mean, <laughs> she needs to say that forever. That was so sweet. Uh, well, I mean, it's not even about, I mean, but it's really, it's like when you, you know, and, and she's not perfect and I'm not perfect. And like, I'm not saying everything's perfect every day, but like just to generally have somebody like at your side that knows everything about you and how you operate, like, you know, yeah, I probably cuss more than I should. And I like, sign up <laughs> more than I, and I have a hard time saying no. And, you know, she's the one that grounds me and like reels me back in and it's like you know great idea wrong time but it's not often you know but it, it's, it's really cool that like she can keep up you know and that you know and, and really like like I said she everybody sees what I do they don't see what she does but if they spent a little bit of time with both of us they would realize that you know she she's the beast you know what I mean like Aww. she's the one like literally six o'clock six fifteen every morning she's up she's up she gets up early to get an hour of work in uninterrupted uninterrupted and then it rolls into the kids. Kids are off to school. I didn't wake up till eight thirty this morning. But you know, I didn't go to bed till one forty-five. Sure. You know, but she she was up till twelve forty-five reading. You know, and she was. I mean, she gets about five hours of sleep every night, maybe. But you know, the difference is, and I'm not saying like a lot of people like we don't we work like feet hit the ground till like we go to sleep. Like there's not a whole lot of like fluff. Downtime. It's a whole lot of downtime. And here's what I think. What I think is wonderful is that you are turning this this shining your light on her i think that's so wonderful i think people are going to love to see this and i think that your gratitude for her partnership is really poignant and i think it's timely and i think that's one of the one of the silver linings of covid is kind of the, that realization of yeah. you know i mean you know the realization of all those things and what's important and what you have and so thank yeah. you for sharing that with yeah. us i think yeah. that, I mean, you know i know it's like kind of long-winded but it's just like it's just like it's so hard like there's so many people that just they don't they don't really know they, they they think they know they stay they think what they see and you know they they don't really know i mean most people don't know she has a full-time job you know most people do not know it's that it's like, yeah she does but you're married, um, you're married to a unicorn it's 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 it's, it's yeah. close to that you know i was gonna try to think of an analogy and it was gonna be really weird i'll tell you because i thought of it but please don't <laughs> please don't think of her this light right but like if she was a bodybuilder, it'd be like kind of <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger versus like some little skinny bit. Like that, she just has the ability to like carry. She's like that. 
like freakish in what she does. You know what That's I mean? Awesome. She's just so anyway. But well, you know, what a pair you guys make, Clark. I mean, what? Yeah, do I uh, you know, I, I don't know who. You know, I don't. I can't say that we would. We would. We would have and be. You know, not that we're anywhere special, but we're we're at. I can't say that we would be there without kind of her contribution. To That's that. awesome. That's you sure. know, because I mean, I you know, it just it takes both sides. You know, last night I'm sitting in the chair. Um, massive headache after a long day and it was like 7 30 and she's like the restaurant needs you so I got up and came up the restaurant till 10 30 last night like I worked yesterday I did get up early full day went home sat in the chair for a minute and then she's like the restaurant needs you so it was like <laughs> put my cooking shoes on instead of my flip-flops and I went up there and um cooking shoes I, I love that I washed dishes for four hours last night you know our dishwasher had a, a incident and he needed to leave and uh so I went and washed dishes at Circa for four hours last night. You know, oh I, we, I just do, we do what, it, what we have keeping to do. Keeping it real. I love that. You're keeping it real. That's exactly you know what I mean. So I'm not, I'm, I'm not above any of that. You know, we got a hundred, whatever, bazillion, 50 employees or whatever. I mean, you know, it, but I wash dishes. Clark washes dishes. Get it done. Awesome. You do what it takes to get it done. Well, yeah. I'm excited. I love this. I've loved, loved, loved hearing your boat snack ideas, but also love kind of hearing your vision, your appreciation yeah. for your life partner is yeah. awesome and makes everybody, and it makes me, makes me think and makes me appreciative too. So thank you. And yes, thank I you can't so wait. Much. We're all going to come out and support you when you open social queue later. I got to come see it. You know, you got to, social queue is going to be special. You know, you'll be able to smell it driving down the road. I think that's really cool. You know I'm what excited. I mean? So we're, we're excited. Look, look, you know, um, we got some swag in. You can follow all of our businesses on social media keep keep up to date what we got going on but absolutely know. and we'll tag through those below here yeah. yep we, we appreciate that's awesome, and you awesome. Guys having us. And hopefully um we'll be able to get back to normal soon the school system just just kind of the look and feel of the yeah the community so i'm excited we'll get there yeah, anyway. <laughs> thank you thank yeah, you for thank everything you guys for all you do thank you for all thank you, you do. we love have it. a good yeah. weekend so clark happy holiday weekend yep thank you ladies okay thanks clark Oh my gosh, that was so dear. dear. I know. That have was you, so dear. Have you met Liza in person before? Yeah. She is the sweetest, sweetest I know. person ever. And she she is who we always communicate through whenever Lana and I and you are planning um a, a little dinner or anything. Hey, like that. You know, I, you know I'm not planning anything, but I I'll let you put it. <laughs> you're approving you're saying yes <laughs> oh that was that really awesome. really cute and i'm excited about, i'm excited about social cue i think that's going to be awesome me too we'll have that to go yeah, yeah we'll definitely yeah. have to go as a team and and of course it's going to be delicious but but go go enjoy a meal together just a, i love that <laughs> well good well good well so as we head into the holiday weekend yes again yes. what is saving your life well, what is saving my life today? So um, I don't know if anyone watched last week, but Mary Cheatham talked about this book that she um, really liked by Young Pueblo. Am I saying that right? Yeah, I think Inward. so. In, yeah. Called Inward, and she was talking about it, just kind of an elusive idea. And um, this week she actually surprised the whole team with their own copy of the book. So um, I really loved being able to read that before I go to bed to wind down. They're literally just like, little tiny paragraphs per page you feel very accomplished when you read 10 pages you're like i just read 10 pages of a book and uh, right. You can right in no time away. it's perfect it's perfect so that's that's been really awesome and it's it's made me really grateful this week so thank you for that that that's been the thing that was saving my life this week i'm so glad that it's a good one i mean it's, it's profound sometimes i'll read one page that has you know 15 words on it and i'm like i'm done exactly that's all i can handle tonight i gotta think about that that's all i got yeah it's awesome yeah. it's awesome it's a, it's a keeper yeah what about you mc well, I'm going to say that mine is our local educators. I just want to say thank you to the people who are teaching my kids and all of our kids. And I know, you know, one of the things I want to acknowledge is that people have had to make hard decisions. You know, and some people are keeping their kids at home and some people have gone alternative routes and some people are, are at the public schools, um, you know, just all different things that people are doing. And no matter what type of education that folks are in, they're just really appreciated. And I think, um, the support that our community has shown each other through making these hard decisions has really been just incredible to witness also. So yeah. I'm just grateful. I'm grateful to kind of be back to some semblance of a routine, even if it's not what we're used to in the long run, gosh, it sure is great to have what we have and to be grateful. Absolutely. For it. So, Absolutely. That was yeah. beautifully put. And I agree. Oh, yes. look, I mean it, I mean it, t you know, t t please teach my people something. <laughs> littles well i appreciate yeah. it and i don't even have kids so keep up the good work teachers thank that's you that's exactly right that's right awesome. that's right thank you guys i hope everybody has a wonderful weekend thank yes. you Meg. have a good weekend mc see you tuesday Bye.